Hi, I'm Bryn Parr and I'm the Region 5 Muskox Research Biologist in Northwest Alaska. One of our ongoing research projects is on the Seward Peninsula and we're looking at population dynamics of muskox. And so what that means is that we're following baby muskox from the time they're born until they grow up and we're documenting when they die and what they die from. We start collaring muskox calves when they're born, which is typically in late April through the month of May. And so we go out in a helicopter when they're estimated to be three to four days old, up to two weeks old. We catch them, put on an expandable collar, and then release them. So the collars that we put on them are VHF, which stands for very high frequency. Each collar has its own unique frequency and code, which is basically like its own radio station. And then we can fly around with a receiver that will tune in to all of those different frequencies or tune in to all of those different radio stations. The collars that we put on muskox have a motion sensor on them. So when that collar stops moving for a certain period of time, it gives off a different signal, which tells us that that animal has either died or the collar has fallen off. And so we go investigate. And when we get to the area, we'll look around for the collar. And when we find the collar, we'll look around even closer to try to find any bones or fur or skeletal remains, anything that will give us a clue as to what maybe happened to that calf. We've documented several different types of mortality with muskox calves. Bear predation, golden eagle predation, birth defects, trauma, caused mortality that is inflicted by other muskox. We've documented a few natural cases of abandonment and unknown predation, which means there's not enough clues at the kill site for us to determine what killed that animal. Uh, we can also spray that collar with luminol when we get back into the lab, and that will illuminate any blood that may be soaked into that collar if it was a predator type death. And so that will provide another clue as to what happened to that calf. This is the first study of its kind where anybody has collared muskox calves in the wild. And so everything we're learning is brand new and is something that can be used by our managers to better understand how this population is doing. And by doing so, we can ensure that muskox can continue to be found in the wild.